Hello and welcome to Book Reviews Kill, a podcast about fantasy, sci-fi, and horror novels. I'm Evan. And I'm Chad. And you're joining us today for our recap and discussion of Leviathan Falls, book nine, and the final installment of The Expanse by James S.A. Corey. We did it, Chad. We did we it, everybody. Did it. We, we finished The Woo. Expanse. Woo. I can hear the echoing clap and uh, cheer from all of the Book Reviews Kill listeners going up collectively <laughs> over all the world. They finally finished it the expanse has taken up so much of our time here on the podcast and before we really dig in here i just want to thank everyone that has stuck with us so far on this journey i haven't loved every second of it but i can no. safely say this is easily one of the best science fiction series i've ever read and i can guarantee i'll be reading it again in the future yes i have some opinions uh, about how it could be better which i'm sure that we'll dig into here in a minute but uh overall is it worth your time if you're a science fiction lover absolutely but do not tread lightly you know know what you're going into it is not only like to use a really weak overused joke like it's very expansive it's oh. huge it's ginormous <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, we're gonna get into the recap really quick here i just want to say as a kind of summation of my feelings real quick that i felt like this series is all about the characters and if this last book if this last installment of the series does anything I think it stays true to these characters. It paid attention to who these people are, and it ended it in a way that I was satisfied with. Almost to a fault. <laughs> I mean, I, th I thought the ending was solid. It was deserved. It made sense. But personally, I thought this book was a lot, a little more cerebral than I was expecting, yeah. and a, a bit slower than I was expecting, too. There was a lot of tension in the book, which I liked quite a bit. The first half was a little boring. It was a slow burn, but the second half was really exciting. Like the LV chapters were pretty boring. And then <sighs> the, uh, the dreamer chapters, I know what it was trying to do, but it was very obtuse. It was just a yes. little bit too much. In my opinion, I just, I was just kind of, my eyes were just kind of glazing over. They were trying to explain what those chapters were in the chapters preceding them, but it still, I was like, okay, so like volcanic vents. Okay. They're like jellyfish people. Right. Like, okay i think i'm getting this yeah, yeah yeah it's a stylistic thing that just didn't quite line up with my taste but i understand what they were going for but all that being said i think james s.a Corey did what was needed and stayed true to their own story rather than trying to subvert our expectations with something bombastic and silly and out of the blue which i really appreciate i mean this was the ending that this series deserved it just didn't feel very uh exciting you know yeah, <laughs> in my opinion i actually at least. don't know if it was the ending that it deserved oh, we because can talk i about felt that, yeah. yeah and we'll talk about the exact why i think that but i felt it was leading up to things and making a point and a lesson that was important and it kind of fell flat on its face and i'll i'll say more later cool i'm glad we'll have an interesting conversation where we're just not where we're not just agreeing with each other the entire yeah. time I love, <laughs> I love those conversations okay cool let's do the recap let's do it following the events of tiamat's wrath winston duarte awakens from his semi-catatonic state and projects himself into the mind of Anton Trejo, who is currently reconquering the soul system for the Laconian Empire. Duarte expresses gratitude for Trejo's efforts in preserving the empire and admits they had been thinking too small in their empire-building vision. Duarte then vanishes, prompting Trejo to order a return to Laconia. Upon arrival, Duarte has already disappeared from the state building and Colonel Aliana Tanaka is tasked to locate him with the highest level of clearance. Tanaka's search leads her to the cave Amos Burton once inhabited, where she deduces that Duarte likely left in an alien ship. She decides to use Teresa as bait to lure Duarte and begins investigating a girl's boarding school on a colony world as a possible location for Teresa. Meanwhile, Elvie and her team, along with the immortal children, Zan and Kara, are investigating the Adro Diamond. As they dive into the library using the catalyst, some of Kara's experiences bleed into Amos, who has been similarly altered. The Rasanante crew are avoiding Laconian ships, while Naomi manages the underground resistance. They transit to New Egypt to take Teresa to the boarding school, where they encounter Tanaka and Laconian marines. After a firefight, they escape to the Rasanante and set a course for the freehold system, a safe haven. However, Laconian forces are present and they alert Tanaka. As the Rasanante covertly resupplies at Draper Station, Tanaka arrives in the system and delivers a message from Trejo to Naomi. The message offers an armistice and an alliance between the Laconian Empire and the Underground in exchange for implementing Naomi's gate travel protocols, withdrawing Laconian forces, and returning Teresa. 
The crew deems Trejo's demands unreasonable, but Jillian Houston takes matters into her own hands, locking the Rasanante crew in their quarters and accepting the Loconian offer. Tanaka, however, has no intention of honoring the deal and kills Jillian's guards before searching the station for Teresa. Jillian releases the Rasanante crew, who launch and escape through the ring gate, while the gathering storm sacrifices itself to cover their retreat. Amos convinces the crew to head to the Adro system to meet Elvi and aid in the investigation of the diamond. Tanaka, losing the Rasanante's trail, mistakenly follows another ship to the Baragon system. During their search, a large ship enters the ring space from the Sol system, seemingly about to be annihilated, but it miraculously survives. This event causes the rings to glow brightly and triggers a shared memory experience among those in the ring space and aboard the ship. The mysterious dark gods, or ring entities, have been attempting to kill humans in various ways with limited success. However, one event eradicates all but the most basic life forms in one system. When the Rasanante finally reaches the Adro system, they decide to perform a dual dive into the library with Kara and Amos. During this process, Duarte appears, proposing that humanity must join him in creating a hive mind to counter the ring entity's attacks. Following the dual dive, Amos convinces Elvi to cease the dives with Kara for ethical reasons. Meanwhile, Tanaka, troubled by the shared memory experience, seeks psychiatric help and receives medication to mitigate the issue. She learns that Laconian scientists believe they have found Duarte's egg ship on the surface of the ring station, and both the Rasanante crew and Tanaka decide to head there. Naomi sends Trejo a message accepting his offer and providing the data from the dual dive experiment while simultaneously sharing the information with the underground resistance and urging them to send ships to the ring space. Trejo orders Tanaka to either retrieve Duarte or assume control. Upon arrival in the slow zone, Tanaka, Teresa, and Amos perform a dive that displeases Duarte. Jim injects himself with protomolecule to reconnect with Miller and the ring station, joining Tanaka and Teresa in the search for Duarte. As more ships arrive, some lose contact as Duarte gains control of their crews through his burgeoning hive mind. Inside the ring station, the team finds Duarte connected to the station, creating his hive mind and stalling the dark gods. Teresa's attempts to free Duarte fail, and Tanaka kills him simultaneously ending the hive mind and unleashing the dark gods on humanity. In the ensuing struggle, Tanaka is also killed. Jim connects himself to the station and holds the dark gods at bay while Teresa escapes and the remaining ships exit the slow zone for good. Once the slow zone is empty, Jim destroys the ring station, severing the dark gods connection to the human universe and causing the ring gates to collapse and fall toward their local stars. The 1300 colony systems are left to fend for themselves. In an epilogue set 1000 years later, a team from the 30 worlds, a federation of 30 colony worlds, journeys to Earth utilizing human designed faster than light travel, where they are greeted by Amos Burton. James! Fucking Holden, Jeez. saving the galaxy. I think I called that like five books ago, but yeah. of course, of course, James fucking Holden. I have to, I'm calling him that for anybody that's listening and doesn't like it when I swear. That's what he's called in the books. Uh, it's almost a term of endearment at this point. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I get to say that. But James Holden does what we all know James Holden is going to do. Naomi knows what James is going to do. It makes sense. Like it, it, In my opinion, it's poetic. This was the way James Holden was always going to go out causing a massive explosion just like he always does so i mean i thought it was very very fitting i thought it was great miller coming back was excellent that was one of the peak moments of the book for me what did you think about the whole like we do all the time let's go ending first okay it's gonna be hard because i (laughs) like and dislike so many different parts of it okay so yes i like how it all came down to holden doing that yet once again I I thought that we were going towards a 
lesson that was can mankind overcome its petty squabbles and infighting and join together and de to defeat a common enemy thus moving forward in our expansion of the galaxy reaching to the stars together as one not with all of these little problems within ourselves because we obviously see at the beginning couple books like one person making a decision with lack of the whole picture can ha lead to disastrous effects and starts multiple wars all sorts of crazy things and then the book ends with one person making a decision that affects all of mankind with very little information and like this one yes just so happened to work out for the best kind of probably but like it just seemed like we didn't accomplish anything we didn't actually join together we're still like even in amos's own words when the guy shows up a thousand years later she's like it's been a rough millennia it's like cool so we didn't learn anything uh yeah. <laughs> we were still just like fighting though maybe we figured out a thousand years in the future maybe that's the point but i just kind of thought maybe we had so such a powerful message that we were coming towards and then it just kind of didn't stick the landing for me i mean maybe the message here is that we're i mean the, oh, one of the sentiments toward the end of the book and i'm kind of paraphrasing here but one of the sentiments is essentially so many horrible things constantly happening in the galaxy uh, especially with humans but we always seem to kind of the good always seems to kind of outweigh the bad we're kind of always stumbling our way uphill and i think that might be the takeaway here is that and you're you're not your observation here isn't invalid right like you are right that we didn't end up you know Damn it wasn't straight, i'm right well no. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> just kidding it, it wasn't like it wasn't sunshine and daisies for everybody and then we take take care of this mysterious alien threat it stayed a conflict until the very end which might be the case even though we are progressing and there is a certain amount of um you know expansion uh, both inner and outer for our race and for us as individuals it is a battle and it's it's just going to be you know right um, at least I, that that seems to be that's at least my rebuttal to to your complaint about it you know i like that and while uh we make a point of trying to not rewrite books for the authors i am going to right now oh, go for it yeah. uh, <laughs> go so for it. i think it would have been so much more powerful if holden about to make that decision used this station's ability to reach every human mind which it clearly has it almost was about to hive mind the whole thing and be like hey world consciousness hey humans what would you like do you want to move forward being in individuals not knowing what will happen and whether who will survive or die or would you like to become one hive mind where we'll definitely survive do you want like and, and then like kind of like taking a vote uh, a vote almost and then having the answer come back and being like we want to be individuals and then he's like cool i got you and make the decision that would have been so cool of like look everyone came together he, the man who started these wars at the beginning by making decisions for everyone didn't once again it wasn't doomed to continue his um, foolishness and make decisions for everybody. He made a decision based on the information from everyone and, and involved everybody. I thought that would have been really cool and like powerful. Well, I mean, I kind of agree with you, but I mean, like, I, mean, I don't actually, I don't agree with you. I kind of see what you're saying. Um, but like, I don't think that he would have had time to talk to every individual person and hold a vote while there well, was no, this because mysterious. It's like the hive mind. He can contact everybody yeah. using this power. Would it be of like the an station. instantaneous thing, though? Yeah. Oh yeah, it, everybody in their brain heal hears his voice, kinda. Connected to what you're talking about, I do have a question, but I do want to say really quick. I thought Holden was going for a sort of like spirit bomb type thing. <laughs> that's what it. That's what it felt Holy like. Hand grenade. Like that's what it kind of felt like for a second. He's just like all sentient life, come to me, like kind right, of situation. Right. But um, that's not quite what it was. But I wanted to ask you though, do you think that becoming becoming a hive mind would be a bad thing? Because one thing that this book does is it kind of explores the nature of consciousness. Like I think uh, I think it was Naomi who was. It might not it might have been LV, I can't remember exactly, but somebody who was saying, are neurons like individuals? Like are we already kind of a hive mind? You know, if you think about it, like the way that our brains are kind of constructed, it's a bunch of separate neurons that would have to be individualized in order to do the things that they do. So it is kind of a hive mind on an individual scale. I see what you're saying, but like I, I don't really know what hive mind means like will in will humanity in order to answer a question you know it's like will i still be chad and just be my own little node would or be will chad I... and also billions of people and like that i i feel like i'm not not equipped. be chad <laughs> right i feel like i'm not equipped with the proper faculties to be able to answer your question not knowing what the end result would be will i have my body uh you would have all you'd have billions trillions of bodies interesting or billions hundreds of billions i mean i don't know so 
you know, sports are all gone, right? We're not like competing against each other. In one in one way, it would be great because we're all my my lesson of us all being together and facing outward would be complete because truly we are one. Yeah, I mean, but, like, you're kind of arguing for Duarte's also uh, I, I, <laughs> side I would over here that the solution to us having our own petty differences and fighting amongst each other is to destroy the even possibility it would be it would, that's kind of weak no right we want to decide yeah. to work together not be forced to and so like no i think if i don't think that we should become one hive mind i think we would lose a lot in communication that happens between people and like like what, what would, it would love be all even communication be? it would it'd be all love man it'd be love all the way down we'd all <laughs> no I, i'm but just would, playing devil's advocate what do you think i mean i think it would be uh, in this specific context with this specific situation in this specific book, right? It's, it's bad because there's no consent, and I think that's kind of like what you were like yes. lightly getting at there a little bit. It was like, oh, straight up, was, yeah, there's yeah, zero like, consent. There would be no you made a decision for everyone. Well, I mean, you're suggesting that Holden made a decision for everybody. I would, yeah, uh, he did, and I think that <laughs> I mean he did, but it was like it was a it was it was a decision that I think we could safely argue most people would be behind yeah yeah but i mean he's still assuming you know he is but like i mean i feel like it's it's probably fine to assume most people would want to hold on to their own individuality yeah i mean he thought it was fine to assume that most people would want to know like the information about uh who just or the destruction of the ship in book one right but that started a bunch of wars because the story wasn't complete yeah and we have lack of information and 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 certainly he did too i mean Detective Miller even asked him, like, what do you think is going to happen? And he's like, I have no clue. I have no idea. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Um, and it was like, once again, cool. Hold in. Uh, did you think that Duarte, <laughs> so Duarte is, you know, ended up being the the main villain of this, I'm going to call it like a trilogy, these last three books of this series. At first, I was kind of let down that it was going to be Duarte. But then, like, thinking about it a little bit more, yeah, it's pretty cool because I don't think I know for sure that Duarte is like this megalomaniac who wanted to be the center of the hive mind, or if he honestly thought this is what we need to do. This is the only way we're going to be able to save the human race. But I'm leaning more toward the megalomaniac side because it yeah. was like, because if it was, because if Holden was able to destroy the ring gates, you'd think that Duarte would also be able to destroy the ring gates. So yeah, I'm going to go or the, the, the slow zone or whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with, yeah, Duarte was pretty stoked on the hive mind. Yeah, situation. I mean, there's a lot of comparisons between Holden and Duarte, right? They just kind of made, they both did the same thing, assumed the mantle of responsibility and decision making power for all of mankind. Duarte just made the decision that, like, I think where it's pretty safe to say the average person would decide against. And Holden yeah. went with what well, was pretty safe to say, but like, not totally safe to say. Like, we don't know. We're just kind of assuming, you know, and especially all the people behind rings um gates that have you know depend on 70 percent of their resources from other planets like all of those people how many millions of them would be like yeah no we do want to do that because if you make the decision the other way we're definitely going to die so you know he was condemning millions to death without ever asking them but i think that um like the individuality i think might be worth more I don't know. It's such a weird. Yeah, maybe. But not. would it be like, worth more to them, right? Yeah. Knowing that they're probably going to die. I don't know because I agree with you. But as far as Duarte's intentions go, Holden did something that he knew was going to kill him, and Duarte was trying to do something that he knew would make him live forever as the center of this hive mind. So I'm going to go ahead and call Holden's actions more selfless and benevolent and better intentioned, at least. You know, I agree. Than, I, their yeah. motivations were different. Yeah, the motivations were different, uh, but still, I mean, Duarte turned out to be a much more interesting villain than I than I thought initially. You know, like he he definitely seems to want the human race to to survive, but it's got to be on like his terms, which right. is which makes the hive mind a weird decision for him actually, because like, would he be king of the hive mind? Probably that's, not. That's what's implied. That's the, like oh, the is text. it? Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what was implied was that. Oh, then um, it's not. Un unprecedented for him <laughs> yeah yeah so it's kind of yeah it's very much um a duarte thing but also i have another question here did you notice that in this book all of the holden chapters are titled jim and not holden probably no actually i didn't but you mentioned it to me like a week ago on the phone <laughs> oh, I did. so i didn't yeah, notice I that after that. you told me <laughs> oh um, yeah i forgot i mentioned that to you already on the phone yeah and after doing that i did notice it and i wonder if it's a is it like a point by the authors to try to bring 
us and closer to his humanity or his individual nature? I'm not sh- I don't know. I mean, I think that what it is is that um, Holden is not the same as he was since being imprisoned on Laconia. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A part of him was like broken and isn't going to be repaired again. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, Naomi notices it. And it's a weird, there's a weird, I wouldn't call it tension really, but Naomi is like pretty visibly uncomfortable. She can't quite pinpoint it either. At least that's what I gathered. There's just something different about Jim. Like, Naomi, I think one thing that it did was it centered Naomi. Like, Naomi's the leader now. Jim's not the leader anymore. Like, Naomi's the leader of this resistance movement. Naomi's the one that gets the command for all the ships to leave the slow zone. It's Naomi now. You know, it's Nagata. I think that it was kind of a way of showing that, like, Jim Jim is now Jim. He's not Holden anymore. He's not James fucking Holden anymore. You know, right. he's, he's Jim. He loves Naomi. He's going to die. So I think, like, your answer, yeah, but, like, expanded on a little bit more. I think it was laconia kind of breaking him and making it so that he's not the yeah. captain anymore you know he's, he's jim now which i liked I, I feel like it kind of like set jim's priorities straight I, I also thought it was just really endearing because i mean it's jim now <laughs> i don't know something about it it just it felt so appropriate for the last book it's like okay you know it's holden it's jim you know yeah. that's what that's what naomi calls him it's i just thought it was really nice it was and uh you know if it is a attempt by the authors to kind of bring about his individualistic nature and thus kind of weirdly foreshadowing his decision to keep all humanity as their own individuals. Um, it's a clever way of doing that. Maybe, you know, yeah, I wonder if it was it. an accident or if it was really implied, if it was implied, it's like, it's very subtle. Yeah. Maybe I didn't even think about that exactly. Like foreshadowing um, his bid for individuality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So one thing I didn't really like about the ending, but maybe you can help clear it up for me a little bit, is like it seemed like we had so many different POV point of view characters over the course of this book. And we spent a lot of time building up many different characters. And then at the end, even though many of those characters are still actively actively involved in the story, we kind of get to hear a little bit about Naomi. Amos and Alex and Holden, of course. And then like, but I don't, I couldn't really tell you what happened to anybody else. Like Trejo, I guess Tanaka died, but um, Kara and her brother. And um, just, there was a lot of people. Also drummer. And like Alex's family, they were a weird part of the book, but not completed. Like, I don't know. It just seemed weird. I think Alex's family, those chapters I thought were a little bit unnecessary until I, until we found out what happened with Alex. And then it's kind of like, well, it just gives a little bit more weight to Alex wanting to leave, you know, that that we had spent some time with Kit and uh, Ahoy. Yeah. I can't remember. Um, Ro- Rohi, I think, was uh, Kit's wife's name. Um, but, I think yeah, so. I yeah, think, good memory. I think um, having those Kit chapters, there were like two of them. So, I mean, yeah, it's not yeah. that big of a deal. They're pretty I, short. Yeah. Um, I, initially, when we got Kit chapters, I was kind of excited because I was like, oh, cool. Like, what's going on with Kit? Like, I want to know what's going on with Alex's kid. And then it's kind of. Like they're fleshed out chapters, I guess, kind of. I guess. It, I think it was more to show the reader, like, this is what Alex is leaving for. Uh, the, showing Alex's reaction to Kit having a kid, and even Kit's reaction to Alex's reaction, where Kit was just like, geez, dad, okay, like, it's just a baby, you know? <laughs> like, <Right>. but, it's, <laughs> but it's important because Alex has missed out on this for so long. You know, he's been out here flying the Rasanante around, and I'm so happy that Alex ended up with the Rasanante. It's his ship, yeah, you know? It is. They, they, and that's what I'm talking about, like what I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, where like, I, I really do feel like, in a lot of aspects, the, the authors did a lot of justice for these characters and did things that, while me as a reader and like the, the things that I'm usually looking for at like the end of a series, I, I kind of tend to... I kind of do want like bombastic subversion just because I bombastic might just take subversion. I love that. I mean, I think it, it might just be a consequence of just the way that I've absorbed media is for 30 years. You know, it's just, mm-hmm. it's like endings for some reason you, you want a big finale, you know? And um, I think that just as I've been reading more and kind of uh, taking in a lot more different kinds of stories, I've started to learn that lots of endings can still fit into a big grand finale even if it's not it doesn't feel like a typical grand finale like this was a grand finale but it was just a little bit more on the emotional side it was a little more uh, about like these characters and 
And so to answer your question yeah, but about if so, the, then like let me know about the characters. Well, see, I think, <laughs> like, you know? I think ultimately what this series was about is the Rosinante crew, you know. So it yeah. was like out of, I do see what you're saying. With the other people, yeah, but like they can only they can only write. They couldn't. What are they going to do? Make it like eleven books? Like people just yeah, like, like okay, so now we're going to go over here to see what Phillips doing, and like now we're going to go over here to see what drummers do. Let's see what. Well, like at least the like, people in this book. Like what happened to the research? The head lady and her oh, husband. LV? LV, and yeah, Fias, uh, yeah, and Fias. What like what happened happen with them and Kara and her brother? At first, I was a bit underwhelmed by the the big bad alien dark entity race trying to kill everyone. I, I wanted something a little bit more tangible. Something I wanted someone to maybe hold in or somebody to like communicate with them and then just be like, bah, 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 we are from a different <laughs> universe and it you are you are encroaching on us and affecting us with your tampering with the proto molecule blah 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 you know but i i kind of like it that it didn't we didn't get to see any of that though i mean after thinking about it a little bit longer there's a definite kind of like eldritch unknowable aspect to them which felt really creepy if you really think they're like pushing and prodding into our universe with like these black tendrils you know like that's yeah. kind of the, the image that you get is that it's it's very reactionary like it's very animalistic like it's so like different and unknown and other that it's it's really creepy you know i i think that james s a corey did a phenomenal job balancing just the right amount of information for this to be terrifying yes it is terrifying in its unknowability and its un understandability too because it's not even from our universe i would have liked to so I agree with you in one sense and in the other sense, I would have liked to understand a little bit of like why it sees us as a threat or why it wants our universe or space or why it's pushing and nudging into our world. Like, is it just trying to expand and be to the my alpha? understanding to my understanding us, us and the previous race of proto people meddling with the technology that they were meddling with is affecting that other dark entity race negatively. Okay. Okay. Right? Um, and so they're reacting to it in a in a it's for us in our perspective an antagonistic way right but it could have been self-defense for it kind of yeah certainly once we sent in the thing in the last book where it blew up you know the the antimatter bomb yeah i mean yeah. i just want to say for everybody listening too i mean like not a lot of this is super clear you know like it's yeah i wish it was and i think that's kind of one of the things that i feel like we I kind of more clarity i think well i mean i think maybe on a reread uh, it would probably be a little more clear, you know, like how was Holden holding them back really though? Like, how was he actually doing that? You know, it just said he was like, will like, like, yeah, just sheer willpower. And it's like, I, maybe, I, I guess, I don't know. Um, I don't really understand how that was happening. Like Miller was like turning off a bunch of machines and stuff, but it's just like, what is going on right now? Um, I just thought like the end, the ending sequence. Yeah. Didn't really do it for me. Tanaka killing Duarte. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't know. All right. Like, Though I did like yeah. the image of him, like her, like using the power armor to like reach into his like. Yeah, that was really cool. I mean, like, yeah, the actual Duarte scene was cool, cool yeah. but just like I don't know, Tanaka. I liked Tanaka a lot. I thought she had a really well fleshed out storyline, especially for being crammed into the last book. You know, there was a lot there, kind of like the uh, the anti Bobby. But yeah, I don't know. I just thought her like kind of effectively saving the galaxy is just kind of like. All right. I mean, we only don't know for like one book, but whatever. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I I found I was both like cool and poetic and also like lame by the returning. And I want to hear your thoughts on this by the returning of Miller at the very end who comes back and he's like, oh, hey, Holden, once he gets proto molecule and stabs himself, injects himself with some of Kara's blood. Um, and it was like cool in one sense, because like it's a cool completion and bringing him back into it. Also lame in the other like, well, what the hell have you been doing this whole time, Miller? Well, I mean, like Holden wasn't able to communicate with Miller because um, he he hadn't injected himself with proto molecule this whole time. So well, right, but like, was Miller doing anything like Holden did once he got to that stage to like fight off this thing, or is he passive? Or, like, I don't think Miller doing? could without Holden. Okay, like I don't think Miller could really do a whole lot because Miller isn't Miller. You know what I mean? Right, he's like, like a like, copy. Miller needs or whatever Miller is the imprint of Miller for Holden's benefit that is actually the proto people or whatever, or the memory, the memory of the proto people yeah, or yeah. whatever. Uh, but like, I think that like, Hol like he needs Holden as like a sort of conduit to be able to like really effectively do anything. 
Right. My understanding is he kind of just existed within this limited network of the ringdom of this ring space. You know, because yeah, in the previous books, he was able to control the um, station and stuff, but maybe he wasn't kind of lost the ability to do that or was pushed out of it by the dark. P. I don't know. Again, with like a lot of the things, I just wish there would have been a little bit more explanation because I'm just left to be like, so is Miller like technically not conscious this whole time or was he existing on their network just unable to act it was uh it was it was nice to see him again <laughs> yeah i guess <laughs> in, but in, it would like be nicer. A, in like a fan service kind of way yeah 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 it would have been cool if he would just been like okay so this whole time i've been digging up a, a way that you can use your will as a living being that exists outside of this network to effectively stop them giving everyone time to leave the ring space or something you know some sort of i don't think reason that's how Miller existence. works yeah maybe maybe that's... maybe not though yeah, but I think I think Miller only is like whenever like Holden is connected to the proto molecule type stuff. Okay. You know what I mean? It's like a only um, Holden thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. Essentially. Yeah. <laughs> it requires Holden's brain juice in order to activate the Miller copy. I'm gonna complain for a second. Maybe this isn't a question, but like the Laconians have these like machine the proto um, dogs the little robots that come around and they show up on their, their this, the edges of their like civilization sometimes take broken things and then return them fixed and then like amos dies and he gets returned so the, clearly somewhere on this planet there's like something some sort of piece of technology that is capable of i guess very powerful fixing capabilities but they never like followed the dogs to like find out what this like insanely powerful and useful fixing technology is especially you'd think duarte trying to be like mr immortal would have like tried to figure out what this tech is you know because one of my favorite parts of the books was the sequence of tanaka putting on the like tracking armor suit and running to try after duarte and then exploring the cave complex that was amos's um base that was really cool but then it didn't produce anything it just was kind of fell flat because she's like oh he's not here we know for sure that he left and then just returns to the place it would have been cooler in my mind if she would like use some of his genetic material or something to activate one of these pods hop in there and then fly off after him or something you know it was like it was like oh this is cool we're learning about this race we're exploring their ancient underground like technology and then like oh he's not here anymore cool I was like, well, why did we even do that in the first place? Like, <laughs> it was so she could land on the decision to try to lure them out with Teresa by sending Teresa to like this boarding school and then like ambushing them. And yeah, well, like, okay, that was, that was fine, I guess. It was fine. Two <laughs> things there that I have thoughts on was one, the the Narasanante should have definitely thought that like there's going to be a trap there, right? Because like they all they did was like look up if. Uh, Teresa has any like friends or family and then go to them it's like I'm pretty sure the enemy would be like let's do the same exact thing like that seems like obvious to me and then two once Tanaka has Teresa was her plan to just fly over because like the whole pro the whole like she's using like well we can either go get the thing or we can bait the thing to come to me but like bait works by putting it where the things normally like hunt or by calling so they know about it but like you're gonna fly around just like hoping Duarte stumbles across them. I, yeah, <laughs> that is kind of weird. Yeah, she, it seems like a pretty passive approach. Maybe she would have just put out some kind of. Like, <laughs> We've got like, Teresa. We've got Teresa. <laughs> you know, Tanaka thinks pretty quick on her feet. You know, she would. She, she would have figured pretty, it out. Yeah, I did find her whole arc to be really cool and like fun yeah. to follow. You know, like if there's anything like her character was like very impactful very interesting fun to follow high action i liked her a lot yeah on a, if anything i wish we had had more tanaka povs in different parts of the at least the last few books totally yeah, that totally would been, that would have been pretty cool yeah and i wish that cave complex would have come to something because that was awesome finding like these vats of like you know uruk high mud that can like create people <laughs> and fix everything i was like this is so cool you know yeah i think it's yeah that's just another example of you know leaving things kind of vague up to the imagination yeah. and then kind of moving on <laughs> yeah you know? like i said at the top of this episode i mean there's just this book definitely felt a little bit more all right now we're with lv and now we're doing these dreamer chapters and now we're talking about volcanic vents and now we're talking about how slower like things evolved slower or differently or whatever and it's just like i i it's just not the kind of stuff that i really nerd out about you know, like I, it's, it's interesting to a certain extent for me personally, but 
it really kind of dragged down the pace of the book for me, at least in the beginning. Mm-hmm. For the, like you said, like about the first half of it, I was like, oh, wow, this doesn't really feel like the last book in The Expanse. It feels like the third book in this trilogy. Like it feels right, like we're wrapping right. up the Laconia storyline and we're not really wrapping up the Expanse storyline. And then it felt like we were wrapping up the Expanse storyline in like the last few chapters of the book. Yeah. So it Hastily. felt like, yeah. So it did feel a little bit kind of, it's funny because it feels cobbled together, but the way they cobbled it together makes a lot of sense. That's kind of like my summation of how I feel about this, this particular book. I don't really feel like that about the series. Mm -hmm. Um, I really love the series. This was definitely like not one of my favorite books, like at at all. Like this, (laughs) this is, I mean, I would say, I would say Babylon's ashes was probably my least favorite. Babylon's Ashes, Persepolis Rising, and Leviathan Falls were just pretty rough for me. Yeah, like, like I saw after like, the time jump. Well, I right. really liked Tiamat's Wrath. I thought, oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, Tiamat's yeah, Wrath was pretty yeah, yeah, solid. That was really good. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, yeah, that was a really good then, one, actually. So I feel like Tiamat's Wrath is kind of sandwiched between <laughs> yeah. two, two, like, kind of boring books. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. like, Persepolis Rising is cool because of the whole like Laconian empire, like coming in and just saying, okay, we're taking over everything. Like that right, aspect right. of it was pretty neat. And then a like the underground the starting. Globe. Yeah. Like the underground starting and everything was pretty interesting. And then TMS wrath, I think really there was like a lot of like good action, like setting up a lot of stakes, like good POV chapters. It was, it was very solid. And then this one, mm-hmm. I don't know, man, like something about it. I was just kind of like, Oh, cool. Like, uh, and Alex, like Alex is sad. Okay. That, oh, that's the end of that chapter. Right, okay. Right. Now it's like, I thought we went through him being here. sad. Like the last one where he was like, should I leave the revolution, the rebellion or should I not? It's like, we've already kind of been here. You know, like, there were a lot of things that was overused again. It was like, man, this would have been cool the first time. It was cool the first time, but now it's like, eh. it's kind of an odd decision to just have like the dreamer chapters the way that they were and have them be so like cryptic and obtuse and like weirdly written, you know? Yeah. And then, then it's like, okay, now we're doing an LV chapter where LV and Fayez like talk about what they just heard or it, what they're, what they were just watching or whatever the Kara was experiencing or whatever, whatever Kara told LV. So then it's like Kara's telling LV this stuff. And then LV's like talking to Fayez who like Fayez is kind of used as like our lens into like what's going on here. Cause Fayez is mm-hmm. just like, are you even speaking English? Like what the hell are you talking about? And it's like, I latch onto those parts because I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. Like Fayez doesn't know what's going on either. I want to know. And then LB explains it to Fayez and she's just like, oh, all this like gobbledygook, like whatever. And then Fayez is like, oh, totally. And I'm still over <laughs> here. Like, I don't know what any of that meant. Like, I don't know what any of this is. You yeah. Know? I, it's like they, and for the dreamer chapter, it's like they called up Simon Jimenez. And we're like, hey, we need some really spacey chapters written about like this, like ethereal creature that like lives in like slip space between universes, but also in like a totally different universe. It's like kind of coming into ours. And like, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think uh, apart from the LV chapters, I, I liked most of this book a lot, but I really yeah, liked just, the second half. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah, to read, at least. The second half was very cool. Yeah. The, like yeah. the visual of what was going on in the ring space was very awesome mm-hmm. um, like holden saving the whole freaking galaxy that was great i mean amos at the end like i wasn't super blown away by a lot of the ending and i don't think that was really the intention was to totally blow people away but immortal amos as king of earth a thousand years later that was a pretty that was a pretty awesome way to close it all out i thought yeah, it was, yeah. i was very happy with that epilogue i thought it was fantastic I was pretty unsatisfied with the ending and then that happened and I was like, okay, well at least I get that to walk away with. Like, that's really cool. You know? I mean, what did you think about Alex taking off in the, in the Rossi and, and everything? I thought that was pretty good. That oh, was, I thought that was pretty that good was, too. Yeah. That was oh, pretty yeah. solid. Um, totally. I mean, I didn't, I didn't like that. They ended the chapter with something going wrong on the ship. Like, could, yeah. we, could we not, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure he's fine, but could we right, not? Yeah. That'd be really great if we didn't do that. Like, Maybe that was like a, a I was like, oh, um, no. nod to like entropy of like, yeah, you know, like things always go wrong, but they overcome it. Like they'll get, they got this too. He'll figure sort it out. Thing. Yeah. yeah you know, like he, always has. he knows what he's doing. Yeah. No, yeah. for sure. I, I think that works for sure. But yeah, but I mean, he doesn't have Amos anymore to like do his job. Or right. Naomi, <laughs> or yeah. yeah, like who was like the best. Um, but yeah, it's it's fine. I mean, I really liked uh, where Alex ended up. I liked where Holden ended up. It fit him. Um, I feel like Naomi kind of got the short end with with the endings, you know. Because I mean, I, I was going to ask you about that because like Naomi 
has pretty much just resigned herself to the way that Holden is, you know, and it's, yeah. it, it had to happen. It was sad right? though. Like now we knew what had, it was just, yeah, that was, that was pretty brutal. Yeah. You know? I mean, so I don't, I think that they did a better job. If you think about it a little bit more of wrapping up her character, because it ends with, it's very subtle, but like they end with like every basically like powerful entity on this, in the soul system, reaching out to her to be like, what the hell? And so like that to me was kind of implying that she was the leading force that took that like helped humanity, at least in the soul system, deal with the after effect of that. So she had a very fulfilling, like important life, at least continuing on in her position of leading humanity's efforts to be alive. <laughs> oh, totally. No, that, that's a, that's a thing for sure. I just, yeah. I don't know. I just felt bad for her, you know, yeah. like this, this man that she loves so much, who's been through so much with her. And, you know, he, he basically just says goodbye and right. goes and saves the galaxy. And it's just like, ah, oh, man, that's so brutal. Like, yeah. And it, again, I just thought that was a real weak humanity, not learning a lesson, Holden, not learning his lesson. Like once again, off to save well, the day well, on his own with an incomplete do? situation. Like, if you knew you could, if you knew there was a chance that you could save humanity from becoming a hive mind beholden to a megalomaniac, wouldn't you do it? Like I would do it. Yeah, you know, even guess, if I thought there was a still, chance, I would stick myself with the same needle, in, man. In the past, when he did those sort of things, it led to wars and it led to all sorts of things. It's like he should have, it's like, it, but okay, again, the effect and actual thing, how it worked out was really great, but it didn't reinforce the message of humanity coming together, of Holden learning his lessons about not to making decisions for other people. Like, but that's what I take issue with is I don't think that was the message. I don't think. I don't think the message of these books was I don't that, think there was one. <clears throat> I think the message here is that progress requires sacrifice. I think that's the message of these books. It's like it is a rocky road. Like we can't just hope for everything to be peaches and cream without you know, like we were already technically technologically advanced at the beginning of this series. They and certainly it was a shit pushed, show. Yeah. Know? Like they it, certainly it, pushed the like one person making decisions for everybody lesson like hard early in the books and throughout the entire series like if that <laughs> wasn't the lesson it's weird <laughs> you just won't let this go <laughs> i won't no i won't because it was hit so hard and again and again and holden needed to learn it's like he didn't and i just felt kind of disappointed about that but you're right well, i mean if you think, um, well, they, you think it did have a point here think about it this way this is my this is i'm gonna try this one more time okay okay <laughs> think about it this way holden was always going to be this boy scout that he was but in the very end he did it for the right reasons. <laughs> so we can't overcome our nature, but we can become better people. All right. I mean, that's fine. Okay. That's a pretty decent business. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah. Fine. We can't, maybe we can't overcome our nature, but we can learn from the mistakes that our nature, the, the mistakes we cause because of our nature and then apply our nature differently. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some, yeah. Something okay. Like that, right, and the motivation for our nature can be proper. Right. I mean, for I the reason that our nature is how it manifests itself. I think Holden's motivations have always been fairly pure. It's just not very well thought out. You right, I mean? right, like it's right. Not, you're right. Like, you're you know, right. Telling everybody that Mars blew up the Canterbury, like, right. Yeah, I mean, maybe should have. He's always been a Boy should've. Scout. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I do think that though the the main message of this series is not that humanity just needs to come together and we can figure anything out. No, it's it's that if you want to progress, if you want to expand we need to sacrifice some stuff like there are going to be hurdles in the way and those hurdles are going to be really difficult to overcome and even if we do overcome them it's gonna be messy like it's gonna be really messy you know but eventually which is what the epilogue is eventually we are going to figure out faster than light travel like at the end of naomi's chapter <clears throat> right before the epilogue naomi says we'll find our way back to the stars you know what I mean? Like this was a hurdle for us. Like this sucked that we had to go through it like this. It sucked that it went down this way and that so many people died, but we are going to figure this out eventually. And that's what happens, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong. And I did say in a previous um, po podcast that maybe, you know, the whole point of like, you'll get the stars when you deserve it. Right. Because the very set of traits and um, attitudes or, um, ways that people can be that lead to you being able to conquer the stars are the ones that will lead to you being deserving of conquering the stars. Um, and that might be kind of the case. And unfortunately at the time that the expanse was written was not the time that we actually did deserve it. And it was unfortunate that we had to sacrifice a lot of people. And the, one thing for, you know, yeah. I say Corey, I will say is they are not afraid of 
murdering millions of people multiple times, which I, I find <laughs> bold and cool. Yeah. Billions of people with a B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this story actually exists in a very small part of the actual overall universe. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to think about. It's like about. there's millions of Milky Ways out there, like trillions probably, you know, there's so like it all existed in one Milky Way. Yeah, I know. It's like think about like all the drama that just unfolded here on a universal scale. It's like nothing. You know, right. <laughs> it's like who cares? You know, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's what I always think when I read like any kind of science fiction that's not like dealing with multiple galaxies and it's just a bunch of solar systems and stuff, and it's like wah, 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 we can't we conquered all of the, the galaxy. And it's like cool, you got one out of like 50 trillion you know like <laughs> you got so many i don't think it's ever explicitly stated though that like all of these things are in the thing they just kind of left you to piece it together i think it's just implied yeah like uh that that like the proto the proto molecule builders um aren't leaving the galaxy um because the galaxy is like so big i mean <laughs> right and the milky way is like a fifty thousand light year radius i believe it's ridiculous it's so fucking it's huge big. but you i mean even it's also tiny compared to everything you like yeah space which is pretty cool is, space is big really big space you just so wouldn't believe big. how mind-bogglingly big it is you might think it's a long road down to the chemist but that's just peanuts <laughs> compared to space uh, and i think i think that's like a lot of the point of this book is they that maybe i struggled with a little bit and because i'm just not smart enough but like they give you enough pieces to get to the conclusion just like i was able to after really putting some brain juice into the like what part of the universe as a whole this story takes place in but like they never explicitly state it and while i do like being left to dig a little into my stories and unearth those things i feel like some of these are so hidden and ethereal and hinted at that like it's like whoa man that was i don't know i feel like it would have been would have been a more powerful and hard hitting story if I maybe had to try a little less to unearth some of the information that can, are contained within this story. Yeah, I mean, I would say, like, I mean, everybody reads differently and everybody has different preferences for, especially with science fiction. You know, um, science fiction is one of those genres where people really do like to be challenged and people really like um, this kind of like really heady, complicated stuff. Uh, for me personally, not a big fan when it's like kind of esoteric and cryptic and kind of like like not very it's just kind of like subtle and not like super well explained um for some people it's really fun for me personally i don't really dig it like i'd rather just kind of like be given the answer sometimes you know what i mean yeah, not the yeah. whole answer like i mean i like piecing some stuff together but you know like i would have liked a conversation between lv and faez or lv and holden or lv and somebody where she was just like okay here's the situation like this is what this race used to be and i think the point of it is that they don't even really know you know they're they're also kind of piecing stuff together but it's like okay well now i'm piecing together what these people are piecing together and nobody has an answer you know like it yeah that's i don't know like that's just not very not very fun for me but yeah, yeah but whatever that's the way they wanted to write the series it's the way the series is you know what i'm gonna do here is just kind of try to stay optimistic about what the intentions of these writers was and i think that they were trying to keep things mysterious for mystery's sake you know uh, yeah. i don't i don't think it was lazy you know i think that no i don't think so either. i think they were i think they were trying to show that you can't have all the answers sometimes you know what i mean like you can't we, we can't work just with what you like, know we're working on a universal and so, and and out, outer universal scale here you know i mean we're not going to know all the answers to everything and i think that that you know as frustrated as i kind of was with some of the lv chapters and how how kind of slow and cryptic they were productive i mean i guess it, yeah i don't know but like i was a little frustrated with the lv chapters but i think that the 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 point of those chapters was to show Elvie's frustration too. You know what I mean? Like Elvie was frustrated. She wasn't getting clear answers on stuff. Fiaz was frustrated because he saw that this work that Elvie was doing was like just killing her. her. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, and then there was like the moral dilemma behind it too, where, you know, she's putting these kids through this, but it's like, are they really kids? Cause they've been alive for so long. And like, this right, just, and they seem excited about it. Like a lot of the ins and outs of those chapters were really interesting. And I, and I think that maybe, you know some of the frustration i feel at not having like the entire clear picture of exactly what was going on with this was shared by one of the characters and i think that was deliberate you know yeah um, and i don't think it's because 
I say Corey didn't even know what they to- they were talking about. I think that they were trying to set a certain tone uh, for these last like these final events that were happening in this book and and for the whole series. You know, like this entire series. Um, and and through these conversations that you and I have had too, we've been like, what what is all this? Like, what does this mean? Like, what it, what's right. what's like, what exactly is happening right and now? And even at the end, we're still doing that. Yeah, yeah. And so are the characters, though. And that's the whole right. point, you know. Right. Um, which I you know I, I dig it. I, I can it get behind its own, that. There's a, there's message and there's wisdom wi- woven into that message as well. And and I agree with you entirely in that it wasn't due to lazy writing, which was leading to our questions, except for one line at the very end, which I was like, ugh, I roll, which was they managed to go like, you know, 36,000 light years or whatever in 31 days because humanity had turned itself, had learned to turn itself into pure energy and intention and slip between the space between universes in order to do that in 31 days. And it was like energy and intention. That's lazy. Like what? Okay, sure. Sure. They do that. And I guess energy can exist outside of our universe. I guess. Sure. Yeah. Like an intention. I, I guess. Mean, yeah. It's like, been whatever. a thousand years. Maybe we'll figure it out. Like if you would have told somebody we haven't a thousand... come that far in the last thousand years. Well, yeah, but that's not how technology works. It's exponential, baby. Like, I mean, like if you yeah, would have told somebody a thousand years ago that we'd energy? be sending each other, maybe who the fuck knows, man, we don't know <laughs> shit. Like we don't know anything, man. I don't know how energy works. Like <laughs> all the particles in your hand are impossibly far away from each other on a relative scale, but they just yeah, look like your true. hand, you know, like we don't know shit. We don't know yeah, anything, that isn't... you know? Like, yeah, but like, our lack of knowledge doesn't lead to us like being any closer to turn ourselves into energy. I don't know. You know? Well, just, I mean, like that I just think, seemed a little lazy writing to me. Like I intention think that, and energy just seemed like okay, I roll. I don't know. I wouldn't call it lazy necessarily. I mean, what are they supposed to do? Figure out faster than life travel for your benefit? You know? What I mean? Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> use yes. Well, no, but we've like, already done it, right? Like use a uh, um, Alcubierre drive, which decreases the amount of it warp space time. So the time in front of the ship, space time is. Um, sh- closer and the time behind the ship is longer so you're not actually moving the ship you're moving the reality or- of space time around the ship by warping it we can already do that on a tiny tiny scale using like cern's collider supermassive collider or whatever it's like there's in the alcubierre drive we already have theoretical ways to accomplish this like we don't have to turn e- ourselves into energy and intention which means nothing to me but like we have ways that i don't know it could have been cooler I, cool. I, I dug it i thought it was a cool line <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was weak <laughs> especially for an for an epilogue i mean if it was like if it was in the third book of a nine book series and then that nine book series was about faster than light travel and that's the only time they ever touched on it was they were just like oh yeah faster than light travel it's just uh, energy and attention and then carry on with the rest of the book and that we'll, we just have that now that would have been kind of frustrating but for like the epilogue to this whole series like yeah, you can keep it a little poetic, you know, like, Maybe. why not? Okay, you know? but the whole time, they're very much grounded in reality. Like, the whole um, Epstein yeah, drive, is is so very, they're making a point yeah. to be very they mechanical like and exist yeah. within our fear. But then at the end, magic. Well, it's not really magic. It's just <laughs> Dude, a it's thousand. Absolute. But it's and a energy thousand. energy and intention. That's magic, bro. People a That's thousand magic. years ago would have called an iPad magic, man. Like, it's all relative. Like, yeah, but I don't understand that at all. There's ways that they could have accomplished the same thing in a way that I go, yeah, I, I don't get how the actual mechanics of it, but like, I understand how that could be possible. Whereas this just is like, okay, magic. Maybe they meant energy and intention uh, in, in, the, in respect to the energy and intention it took to develop that technology. <laughs> I'm sure that too. <laughs> I knew you were going to scoff at that. <laughs> I'm just team essay Corey here. I just think that Dude, they, they built such a beautiful series here, man. They like, really I mean, did. like there's so much about this that, you know, and like I, I had my kind of fatigue moments, you know, like I was kind of sick of the free Navy, uh, toward, toward like the middle of Babylon's ashes. I was just like, yeah. Man. And then there was definitely that kind of, um, Right around book seven, I think I was like, man, I kind of want to be done with this because I think it was that we basically just had a bigger free Navy and that book seven had gone so much into that. And I was just like, man, what the hell is going on? Yeah, we've just, we've been here before. And it seemed a lot like we had, you know, we had Dresden, we had uh, Mao, we had, we had Mm -hmm. like a lot and um, uh, McMurtry in in book four. And uh, then we get Marco and then we get Duarte. And it's like, it's, it's like the same kind of guy, like over and over again. Like the, the, like, I know better than everybody else exactly how to save everybody's ass, but but I'm really doing it for myself kind of thing. And it's like, dude, you've done this exact character like four times. Um, We're here. We are once again. Yeah. um, So there, there is a little bit of, I think that a lot of what my fatigue was coming from was just kind of like 
repetition and it felt kind of formulaic and it felt like we'd already been places before. Um, but those moments were pretty few and far between. I mean, I think that um, having all these point of view characters for this entire series was a really smart move. I remember a few episodes back, I had said something to the effect of, I, I would have liked it to have just, I think it was when we read Nemesis games. Yeah. And uh -huh. I was like, I was like, it would have been so cool if this entire series was from the point of view of only the Ross and Dante crew. And then I was thinking about it a little bit more and I was like, no, I'm kind of glad they did it the way they did. You know, I think that I agree with you with the exception of like Prax. <laughs> what do you mean? The botanist. He just wasn't interesting at all. I just thought that he was. There was a few point of view characters. I was just making a joke. Like there's a few oh, point of view yeah. characters that I thought were just lame and like not necessary. Oh yeah, I mean that, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's a thing <laughs> yeah. for sure. Um, but I think that Anna uh, maybe I would have been pretty bored with just the Rossi crew for nine books. Like I'm yeah. glad we got Teresa chapters. I'm glad we got Singh chapters. I'm glad we got Tanaka Sarala and Bobby and yeah, well, Bobby was part of the crew. But yeah, there was a lot of really good characters. And you know, while I you know a lot of this episode is me being like i didn't get that i didn't get that and like you know i, I definitely don't want people to take away with like that i didn't like this i thought this series was awesome i just thought and do prefer with my stories to end with a little bit more concrete of a m one message and two just knowing what's going but like i do get the purpose of a story that ends with a lot of those things just kind of being hinted at or left for me to kind of figure out on my own or make assumptions in order to get there you know there's a there's a value in that sort of story as well i just thought that it wasn't and i was going to end with a cool the clearly divined thing and so while i am a little unsatisfied with the end that's more of a personal preference thing and not a statement about this story and its quality overall i just want that people because it's very good i will definitely say my expectations for literal contact with literal aliens was set in the first few books and it wasn't met and yes. i think that i didn't know could be with them <laughs> that could have been that might have been on me but eh, i don't know i feel like that was i feel like it was kind of <laughs> that's why <laughs> I like that's why really i'm standing up the aliens. that's why i'm standing so hard behind my lesson of like humanity coming together to do that because like they really harped on it so hard and then like it turns out like that wasn't the lesson at all and in fact the lesson is kind of almost the opposite of that is like we will expand even without ever doing that but we'll, we will we'll still go on it'll just be like really hard and we'll always fight each other like <laughs> we'll never actually overcome our nature and that's no, okay but, well i mean we might we Those... can we can direct it in a proper direction right yeah i mean well and and we might you know like uh, a thousand years passed and humans are trying to get their shit together again and uh you know but time. that's not saying that like we're not going to get into an inner you know solar well, yeah, system yeah. war <laughs> yeah. no really i mean like i think that james s.a Corey definitely really likes realism that's one of the things yeah. that, that was one of my takeaways from <laughs> this series is you know i mean it's down to the crash couches which i've never even thought of in a science fiction series before awesome. it's just like the idea that oh yeah you probably would actually need something to kind of cushion you if you're traveling at that speed for like accelerating like flip, that halfway yeah. there to slow yeah. down great all cool ideas really cool stuff yeah and like it's funny because that was part of the repetition and um, honestly part of the fatigue with this series is how much how much text is devoted to explaining what the gravity is somewhere or drive or signatures like, like yeah lots of that like yeah. lots and lots and lots of that but i mean that's that's what they wanted to write about and like they they wanted that realism there and it definitely lends a lot to Except how for energy of, and intention oh my god <laughs> i liked it i don't give a fuck <laughs> i thought it was cool it would have been fine if we would have had more of that it just seemed like out of nowhere they were like how are we going to accomplish this like 31 day travel of, like oh like dude magic for sure it's it would have been the same magic. thing like when it's they used not, love to get there. We're like, oh yeah, okay, sure. Maybe in the in a thousand years we will be able to power spaceships hey, with listen, love. For people like in your own words, for two authors who have spent so many pages trying to capture realism, I feel like they did a pretty shitey job at the end to continue with it and end with it, right? Nah, I disagree. We're gonna disagree <laughs> on that forever. I thought it was great. Um, did you think when Amos was shot by Tanaka? that he was actually going to be dead no i wasn't worried at a second yeah i wasn't worried yeah at all. 
no like, problem. He's dying yeah. once, he'll be fine. Yeah, we got zombie Amos. He's not just gonna die from a gunshot wound. Yeah, like, totally. I mean, I was really excited when he came down, and he was just like, "What's up, everybody?" I thought that was and actually I, really cool. Yeah. Way of him coming back, and he's like, "Yeah, no, it sucked." <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, but I wasn't. I don't think that they wrote it even for you to be necessarily worried about. It. I think it yeah, was more yeah. for. Um, it was more for Holden and crew to be like, what the hell is going on with this guy? You know, right. I think that was what it was for. It wasn't necessarily to like rattle our cages, you know, because I was just like, there's no way that Amos is going to die a second time, but for real from one gunshot wound, you know, like, that's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. No, there's no way. Totally. Um, I also thought it was a little weird that, so like Trejo learns that Duarte is stopping the has has basically like effectively ended the stop has ended the attacks by doing whatever he's doing in the middle of the ring station and he's like I don't care Tanaka go get him <laughs> it's like but he's like currently saving all of humanity don't you want to like let him do his thing right <laughs> Trejo is very one sided yeah Trejo definitely was like a little bit like let's make the dinosaurs into weapons kind of yes he was you know. that guy yeah well, t- which i guess we'll we parachute kinda, in raptors <laughs> i guess we kind of need that guy you know i guess the scientist <laughs> yeah he was yeah he was a little uh undynamic so i have a question um what happened with all the protomolecule technology and like laconia they didn't like bring down all of laconia like what i just feel like we didn't really get to see exactly what happened to i mean maybe everything was just so separated because the ring system was dismantled that it like they can't just like go into detail about like every single thing because it's what you mean like the ship ports that were destroyed that you were using the proto tech or just like the general tech the alien tech being explored as a general just i mean there's there's a bunch of proto molecule technologies laying around the galaxy oh like actively operating fixing things even they don't even care at all they're not even looking into them I spent like the end of the book, like what's going oh. on with all, like what's, what's going on with maybe all that? Maybe all got disabled. No, probably not. Maybe, maybe they used it to figure out faster than light travel though. Oh, maybe yeah. so. Maybe, maybe so. Maybe, maybe that answers your, uh, your question. Yeah, maybe, 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 good. <laughs> maybe you could. Maybe you could let it go. <laughs> Never. <laughs> okay. So I'm kind of confused on one point. Um, did the gate builders go extinct? Like, were they, okay. like, were because I felt like the dark entities actually killed them all off, but like with this, this uh, the Adro Diamond thing, it's I like, don't know. I have two theories. Okay, and I think either one, yes, they went extinct, or two, they were able that they were so technologically advanced they were able to download basically their collective consciousness into the BFE, and that is like them now, kind of or something like they exist as one big hive mind and that is the bfe or, or something that's what i kind of thought so maybe they either became the dreamer or they did actually get extinct and the thing that is the dreamer is just like all their information kind of becoming conscious i thought the dreamer was kara because there was a chapter where there that was called the dreamers plural where Amos Kara was interacting Kara. with the dreamer because like the dreamers were always whenever we got the dreamer chapters it was talking about like Kara showing or being shown like how their their growth as a species, but in a really like esoteric weird. But Kara isn't she is kind of the same thing, right? She was like the proto molecule people that became the dreamers, that became the BFE, which is the dreamers. I think. Yeah, when I'm when I've been saying the dreamers this whole time, I've been meaning the the thing that is showing that Kara is interacting with, which I think is like exists within the BFE, maybe. No, I think you're right because I'm pretty sure that the gate builders like they knew about this threat. And before they were like completely eradicated, they they kind of downloaded, they turned off the hive mind or whatever, and went into this crystal thing. I think that's what. Oh, it was like a self defense mechanism. I yeah, I guess so. And then like, I mean, then they're a uh, they're like a parasitic type of species by nature, right? Like evolutionarily, um, that's kind they're of like one of the things. They're taking over solar systems. And like stuff. The, that's what kind of them. So they they like shot out this proto molecule like hoping i guess that our race would eventually like you know figure out they turn the ring system back on and find this big diamond floating out there which i feel like they could have introduced the diamond a little bit earlier on yeah they definitely like nothing really just kind of appeared in tms wrath and 
I think it's a lot like, more important to under, understanding the story than we're giving it credit for. And it would yeah, be nice to have more books of yeah, that. Yeah, it would have been nice to at least touch on it every now and then. You yeah, know? so I guess, but, so turning there, because it seems like weird to be like, let's turn ourselves off to save ourselves from this thing. But they weren't really doing that. They were turning themselves off to save a, save a vestige of their what they built, right? Like who they were as people. And so that maybe another race in the future could come along and glean value from their existence so that their whole existence isn't pointless. They kind of saved themselves by destroying themselves in a controlled way by being in control of their own destruction that allowed a little bit of them to exist beyond and be found by us. And, you know, it's interesting too, because like I still maintain that this isn't, this isn't the first contact story that I really wanted no. You know, but it is technically a first contact story. You it know what is. I mean? Like, like we are, like the fact that uh, how do I put this? Like There's the fact two that contacts like, in the story. Yeah, I mean, like the the fact that like we are interacting with the proto molecule. It 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 is still like the proto molecule builders, uh, like are contacting us. They're just they're so alien like it's it's alien contact in a way that we've never really thought about before or at least i've never really thought about yeah. before it's like this is the definition of alien you know like it's something well that we said, yeah like we can't like i can't even comprehend like exactly like what this species mind? in right. and like yeah they're, they're like made of light or whatever or they like communicate yeah. with light and stuff and it's like that actually james s a cory loves realism and like that is pr that might actually be what it, like how weird an alien species actually would be it wouldn't just be people with like big eyes that were just like ah hello you know i'll give you this for the light intention thing because the proto molecule people were actually made out of light or turned find a way, figured out a way to turn themselves into that becoming this hive mind like ethereal being or something and the fact that we were talking about maybe that they used proto molecule tech in order to teach themselves how to become light and use the intention to travel hey. that's like I'm, I'm connecting a little bit of i still think it's a little <laughs> magic key and a little lame and a little weak but it makes more sense to me now i'm willing okay, to be like okay. all right fine <laughs> <laughs> only one hey. eye is rolling okay cool uh, if i can get <laughs> you down to one eye the intention part is like okay whatever <laughs> duarte appears in Teresa's room during her 16th birthday and like he very much millers it right he's like which would have been a cool thing if it was the first time that this would have happened in the story but as we've said something kind of happened a little bit repeaty and you're like wow okay cool we've got another person just showing up in people's room and then disappearing when other people walk in okay it was weird to me that if he could have done that like why didn't he do it to like sell tell everyone like hey stop spending so much resources trying to find me i'm actually doing something i'm pretty close and you can help me in this way or something it just seemed weird that he would do that if he could do that he used it in a really lame way to just be like hey so I wasn't going to bring this up because I didn't know if I was right about it. And I, and I was leaning more toward like this kind of like megalomaniac uh, villain, um, who was more conscious than not, um, and had kind of like misunderstood the proto molecule builders and wanted to create this hive mind that he was at the center of, but also maybe he was being controlled by the proto molecule in the way that Miller kind of is being controlled by the, you know what I mean? Like maybe oh. like, so I didn't bring that up cause it seems a little far fetched maybe. Um, but like maybe Duarte really isn't Duarte anymore in much the same way that Miller isn't Miller anymore. Right. Right. And he's just kind of being used by this extremely unknowable alien tech that's using it for its own purposes. Yeah. And it has surviving. to be one or the other. Right. Um, yeah. And I don't know exactly which one it is. Like I, I'm leaning more toward that Duarte is like Duarte and he, and he's just a crazy villain. And yeah, yeah. Because I think that that really, it fits in my brain a little bit better squaring it against Holden. Right. But, and like what a villain is in your mind. Yeah. But like, I mean, I could be wrong about that, but um, yeah, I, I think, I, I think, think that that is an, an, an an answer if not the answer to your question is maybe duarte is being because uh but that also kind of what is even accomplished by showing up there i forget what does he even tell um teresa i don't remember like, i got this <laughs> i think he says like i got this or like yeah, we're it's, it's, i'm close to figuring it out i'm close yeah. to being able to control things which is like why did he pick her but maybe he can only show up to people whose minds he knows really well just like miller can only show up to holden because they have some sort of weird connection maybe he can only do that with his daughter 
So that's why he doesn't show up to like Trejo and be like, "Hey, stop oh, maybe. wasting so well, much resources." Remember what resources. Amos said. Remember, maybe this does work with kind of with both answers. I'm not really sure. I'm still kind of trying to figure this out with you. Uh, but like, remember what Amos said about um, a parent's like last the last bit of a parent is the love for their child Ooh, or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. So I think maybe that has something to do with it. That's yeah. It's a really nice sentiment from Amos. Yeah, by that's the way. very poetic. Yeah. I like that. Man, yeah. I love Amos. Like, Amos even is the last, absolutely the best. Yeah, I would agree that Amos is probably, he's not my favorite character. Alex is my favorite character and very closely followed by Bobby. Bobby was definitely one of my favorite characters. Bobby was entire. high up there. The way she yeah. went out was definitely my favorite death. Actually, I think, I think Bobby and, Am and Alex for me personally are like neck and neck for my favorite character. I would say Amos is Amos a very, is very close second or third, like right in there. Amos is your favorite. Yeah, there, he yeah. just did so many inf interesting things. His arc, I mean, like, he's still kind of the sa stayed the same. Like, he's always, like, dependable and sturdy and strong and tough. Um, but I think that's one of the reasons why I like him. He was so, like, stalwart in who he was. And he didn't actually grow that much as a character over the course of the source, over the course of this story, because he didn't really, like, need to. He was able to use his, like, he, he became more of his positive traits. They, they hardened, but they were not new ones. Whereas a character, I feel like Holden really changed quite a bit though also one could say not very much at all i like the things that happened to amos as well like he was just interesting things yeah, around him he never he stopped being time. interesting yeah. yeah amos was consistently interesting for this entire series for sure yeah. man this is kind of reminding me of the dark tower ending um it's not as that was know, clearer to me well yeah it was clearer Honestly, but what i'm saying what i'm saying weirdly is, enough so what i'm saying with this though is like i'm feeling this feeling of not being very satisfied with the amount of stuff that I feel like wasn't really crystal clear, right? And I think that we're just in a trend of uh, authorship and a trend of writing right now where some stuff just kind of goes unsolved, you know? And like and that is the point. Though I remember having some really cool theories that I don't, I can't pull them out right now because my brain doesn't work like the un, un uh, forgetting box that yours is. Mine has a more of a, a holy kind of salve approach on uh, memories. But I remember having some pretty cool theories as to the dark tower and what it was actually meaning that like really made a lot of sense to me um, that more so than at the end of this series, I feel like, like I feel like the dark tower was a little bit more understandable and knowable, at least for me. Final thing that I have that I just was thinking a lot because you mentioned in uh, earlier in this episode, you were like, there's a lot that it was just like vents and like underwater creatures doing what now. And I was just like thinking for a minute in silence to myself about this whole thing. And I think I figured out a main thing. I think the proto molecule species started as an aquatic species, jelly people. Yeah. I think that's yeah. true. Yeah. 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 And the, you know, and then like, became a hive mind like you're saying each one were able to operate independently there was like a neuron so they became like a planet-wide oceanic hive mind which totally. yeah what is a oceanic beast called a, a leviathan, leviathan. <laughs> yeah it makes all the sense <laughs> totally yeah no, and I then think they were able to yeah. you know evolve again and start building creatures to help them and then you know like they could communicate but not over too large of areas so they made it the ring gates and so that that helped them pass light which was like their thought kind of between things. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going, no, that, going out on a no, reach I think, on this point, I think but. you're, I think you're nailing a lot of what this is. I mean, as far okay, as we cool. can nail stuff, because I, th yeah. I, like I said earlier, I mean, I think that like the point of this is how alien everything actually is. And I, I think that the, the, one of the central points of this series is, is showing how humanity tends to get in its own way sometimes. You know right. what I mean? Like we, we and kind look for of ourselves everywhere. Yeah. And I mean, like we, <laughs> like, we probably could have figured out more about this proto molecule species, but we were busy figuring out trade routes and we were fi busy figuring out how much to tax stuff. And we were busy figuring and out how to kill each other. Bombs. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and you know, and it was almost too late for us. Like we almost didn't figure this out because of yeah. getting in our own way, you know? And I think that's like a big part of it for sure. It is. And while the proto molecule people were able to proto molecule people, people lose to lose, lose I, term. I like the term um, gate, gate builders. Uh, this, gate builders. Yeah. The builders yeah. was nice. I've been using yeah. proto people this whole time, but yeah, builders is nice. Um, and I think while they were able to, you know, use their hive mind to create technology that we can't even fathom, right? The, these gates and like even a thousand years, like, yeah, we were, were um, be able to like slip in between universes and stuff, but we still haven't created like, 
the the level of things we haven't consumed stars we haven't created like dyson spheres like they were able to which can you know consume the entire power of a star um yes we are limited in our own individual nature that is a little bit selfish in 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 its like um the core of its being right because we're individuals not this hive mind able to all work as one but it's showing look what they were able to accomplish and yet also yes we have our faults with our individuality but look at what we were able to accomplish and like you yeah, know totally. one could even say that individuality is the right road that they were arguing because we made it and they didn't you know but um we also kind of made it because we were able to kind of um a springboard off of the back of the technology that they left for us so we were kind of working together to to survive but um yeah that makes a lot of sense to me and that they were kind of saying like look how different they are and yet there is value in all life however it manifests okay well uh, i've got a couple uh, a couple more like kind of whole series questions that i like to do you know towards when we're doing the last episode for a series we're reading and i'd like to hear if you have it ready the your ranking of these books based purely on enjoyment i'm gonna need to think about this for a second um but for the sake of time hit me with yours first as i you probably prepared the answer to your question because you knew i was gonna hit you with it okay cool well (laughs) you all think while you do yours okay cool uh so for i'm gonna do this from the title that i least enjoyed to the one that i most enjoyed cool caveat here i liked all of these books um but (laughs) <laughs> I liked some a lot more than others. So uh, the one I liked the least, I think I mentioned this earlier in the episode, was Babylon's Ashes. Um, I I think I know what it was. You know, I get it. I think it, I know that it was like a, uh, it was kind of a reaction book and then an action book, you know? So it was a lot of like everybody kind of processing what the Free Navy had really done in Nemesis games. Um I wasn't a big fan of the chapters that took place on Medita Station. I didn't really care that much about Marco, honestly. Like, I just, eh, whatever. Um, Because I think I figured, like, we still have some books left, and they're going to get, they're going to get his shit figured out at the end of this one. So, whatever. Let's just do it. Let's just get it over with, you know? Um, So, that was Babylon's Asterisk. And then number eight uh, uh, is Persepolis Rising, which I thought was just, I don't know. It was fine. Like it was, it was like, I think that the underground forming and stuff was pretty interesting. Uh, sing the sing chapters in, in, in particular, I thought were pretty cool. Um, but for the most part, I feel like it was a pretty forgettable book. Like Laconia came in and just kind of establishing everything. And yeah. Um, and then number seven is this book, Leviathan falls. <laughs> like it's pretty far down the list for me. Uh, I really, like I said, you know, I think that the ending made a lot of sense and um i'm happy with where all the characters ended up i thought the the last sequence was pretty epic you know pretty poetic uh all the goodbye chapters were very heart-wrenching there's a lot to love in this book uh, i do think that it was pretty slow you know there were a couple action beats but it was a lot of you know uh like amos talking to holden and Teresa talking to holden and uh like like tanaka dealing with sharing memories because she's got a past she doesn't want anybody to know about and it's like we're really cramming a lot of tanaka into this you know it's a character we're just now seeing in the very last book of a series so that's cool i did love her chapters she did have some pretty awesome chapters for sure it just felt a little like lopsided but it totally she she, if they're gonna do it like they did it really well and tanaka was pretty awesome um so yeah i think this book definitely um it was the it was the ending the the series needed um so yeah uh, i just feel kind of like eh. uh and then uh cibola burn is number six uh cibola burn kind of has grown on me thinking back on it you know like i thought that was going to be one of like one of like the very lowest rankings but no nah, it was pretty cool like the ending it was pretty awesome like the the whole like uh that was like and LV it was and very and localized Holden. yeah that was a pretty awesome book i like cibola yeah. burn um, and then right in the middle is TMS Wrath. I think it's an awesome book. It's great. Uh, lots of really cool action sequences. Bobby going full Valkyrie like that was excellent. Really, really good. Um, I liked the chapters on Laconia with uh, Teresa. I like the Teresa chapters a lot. Holden being the dancing bear character and everything. Um, yeah, it was just this is a great book. And then uh, at number four is Leviathan Wakes. 
Leviathan Wakes is excellent. <laughs> That's a really awesome it's first book. Very, it's like one of the best book. first books in a series I've ever read. It was it was really really cool. Um, I think that just having Holden and Miller, Holden and Miller, Holden and Miller, just exactly like that. It was it was perfect for that first book. I liked the noir kind of vibe that Miller brought to it. Um, yeah, I just think it set everything up really really well. There was tons of mystery, tons of action. All of it was awesome. And then uh, number three, book three is Abaddon's Gate. Abaddon's Gate was nonstop action. <laughs> it was excellent. <laughs> oh my God, yes. I love that book so much. Abaddon's uh, Gate was so awesome. Yeah, Abaddon's Gate was really, really awesome. And then number two is book two, Caliban's War, which I think just took everything Leviathan Wakes did and just made it even better. Like every aspect of Leviathan Wakes that I already really loved, it was expanded on. Um, it was, it was, we had more of Ava it was we had more Bobby or well, not more Bobby, but we got introduced to Bobby. It was perfect. And then number one is nemesis games book five. I think nemesis games is the best book in this entire series. Uh, I, we've got chapters from each of the Rossi crew. We've got the red wedding of the series where they drop asteroids onto earth, all of that. Um, the, uh, the, the prologue with Philip was so, so cool. Like Amos down on earth, trying to find Clarissa and then they're they're get trying to get back up to the moon and everything um all of Naomi's chapters and finding out more about Naomi's past and then all the Alex and Bobby chapters and stuff it was just every time I turned into another chapter it was like oh cool we're in this part of the adventure now Nemesis Games is so freaking good I think it's the best one so yeah that's my ranking okay so from the back of the series my least favorite book definitely i think was babylon's ashes oh wow we shared that one cool yeah i just did our, our fine i think our last three are pretty oh, similar interesting. Okay. um because yeah. after that i have persepolis rising just oh. like eh. it, that was your number eight, yeah it was, or, that was number seven eight, too, yeah. right yeah or, yes eight. eight yeah it was just uh, it was like it was just so and like it could have been due to me like if all of those same events happened like earlier in the series, I might've been cool, but it seemed like a little samey fatigued. And it was just like, come on. Like, I don't know. I felt they weren't delivering what I really wanted out of the series at this point. And I was kind of confused still as to where it was going. And I felt like like at that point I should have not been. Um, And then Leviathan falls. Yeah. That's Um, what my bottom three were too. Is that your bottom three were? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, And this, and you know, I like struggled with a few of the books. I like Leviathan. I started with the list with Leviathan Falls high, way higher on the list. But then as I brought up my notes for the old episodes and like started looking at them, I was like, oh, I love that. Oh, I love that too. And so then it started moving like farther and farther down. Yeah. Um, so yes. I, and the second half, I really liked, I really liked it has some of the best action sequences, like honestly, like really good action sequences in the second half of this book. But like, I felt like a lot of them, I was so tired of like missile battles and storming um, of, of stations. And it was just uh, a lot of it was done before. Yes, it was a very good uh, ex- explanation of it, but it was like kind of old used material, you know? Um, then after that, I have Sabula Burn. Wow, that's also exactly my order. <laughs> that's so oh, funny. Is it, are we at yeah. the same still? Really? Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, I know you weren't really listening. That was more for the listener benefit because you were making your list. Yeah, I was uh, hardly listening to yours. I was just like, yeah, no, <laughs> that's it's okay. Like, oh, no, cool. it's fine. So. Um, after that is uh, Team It's Wrath. Yep. Team it's Wrath. Is it really? Yeah. No way, dude. <laughs> yeah. No way. That's wow. So funny. I swear to God, I was like hardly listening to you yeah. talk. Yeah, no, that's fine. That was, for, that was for the listeners. That's crazy, dude. Okay, so Sabolo Burn was, I'm sure, for all this, probably the same reasons that you said it was. Um, or, I mean, excuse me, Team It's Wrath for yeah, the same totally. reasons, I'm sure. And then after that, I hope this is not the one that you had. I had ne- Nemesis Games. No, no, that was my okay. number one. Yeah. That was your number one. Oh, okay. Cool. Wow, that's a different. That's way different. Um, I liked Nemesis Games a lot, but it wasn't, I don't know. It was, it was, it, it wasn't as good as, it was, I mean, we're out of a nine book series. We're in the very cream of the crop here at this point. So I guess it was very good. You know, it was better than the other five that I've already mentioned yeah, so totally. far. Um, it was very, I had a real hard choice on these next ones ordering them because I really, for the first four or five books of this series, I really enjoyed myself quite a bit to like, it was very, very good and fresh and good. Um, after Nemesis games, we have uh, Leviathan wakes the first one. So that's number three for you. Yeah. Number three okay, for me, yeah. which, where was that for you? Uh, that was number four for me. Yeah. Number four for so, you. Okay. Yeah. I love that book. It was yeah. the start of this whole series, which I really love and am stoked on. And it was just like, 
it was like obviously very fresh but like it was just an introduction to this there's so much mystery yeah. and some it's crazy things book. that happened it was a great great book um and like i said like the introduction to it all you know and that's just could be nothing but exciting after that i have abaddon's gate what yeah, a book yeah that was my number three yeah that was your number three yeah. abaddon's gate was so just contained yeah totally it was small and it was like i like some big books for sure and i like multiple points of views and i love all of that but abaddon's gate was like it all happened in like seemingly one very small location a lot of strife a lot of struggle a lot of conflict death war uh it was you know the second to my culmination of this story at its finest it was and because like i feel like we had all the pieces figured out kind of for all the different um factions and they were all just pitted against each other in this like lock grid it was awesome i just loved it a lot um and then number one for me was caliban's war yeah caliban's war is really good <laughs> caliban's war is so good yeah like it's excellent. just a money book <laughs> yeah like uh, i think it's i think it's a we very get christian avasalera we yeah. get bobby yeah like two of my favorite characters in the whole show are introduced in that book and it's it lays out it, it expands the universe to the point that it's like okay cool i'm not just like learning about like belters and mars we get some earth we get some political machinations it's it's like the definitive expanse book yeah it's, it's caliban's war yeah it's so good it's yeah. so good i think if so, i do end up rereading this i kind of want to a little in, but... yeah yeah they were cool but yeah uh i think like if i end up rereading this series i could see myself just rereading the first like three and yeah. being and being pretty satisfied with that just that jaunt you or know at least and just the six before the honestly time jump. honestly i feel like you could read the last three by themselves they could yeah also. yeah totally because i think i feel like i think james s a corey intended on writing two three duologies and one trilogy i think that w that really was what they set out to do oh really so, wow okay oh they yeah they, they definitely it. i felt like they wrote one sixology a sisology and one trilogy um, i mean kind of i mean so it kind of makes sense i mean it's like the first two books are like the discovery of the proto molecule books three and four are kind of like the consequences of finding the proto molecule right you know, and how we with, our initial reaction to it yeah and then books four and five uh excuse me books five and six are the consequences of the consequences of finding the you know what i mean right like, right right like how we've settled into it yeah exactly and then there's this big time shift where we kind of cleaned a lot of that up beyond. and yeah. then and then it's like okay but now we really got to figure this out you know yeah. like now okay we've been drifting around for 30 years and everything's been hunky-dory but also there's been this empire that's kind of been biding its time because of the knowledge that they have of this big like dark entity like thing that right. we never really sorted out you know like that right. was never really talked about that much we, we flirted we, with it a little bit and we're like whatever yeah. we'll just keep doing our thing so yeah it all kind of makes sense i would love to know what this story would be like for like the guy who was like a plumber the whole time you know who's like had no involvement in any of these things <laughs> just like, like hearing the news reports with, yeah i know seriously that's um people have asked that about star wars a lot too you know yeah <laughs> or i think that's like, how is their world changing even. yeah i mean besides um, death i think that uh yeah i mean it's a lot of books like this only look at the key players right know? right of course i mean that's kind of um, how they have to but i just would be curious as to the average the life of I, bet the they average soul. I bet they wouldn't really notice that much unless you know, time unless time was being like turned inside out and stuff like at those, that point of the story yeah, yeah at that yeah. point and that would be terrifying Dude. man like can you imagine that I'm surprised like, that the plants didn't start rioting like okay what is happening that was that was something that in these in these last couple books i felt like i like i wanted to know more and i felt like it probably would have i think that's kind of what they were trying to do with the kit chapters you know, because Kit mm. ends up going through like that that process of going Dutchman or whatever. Totally, um, and that happens to the that at the end of uh, Nemesis Games or Babylon's Gate. I, I can't I can't remember which one. Babylon's Ashes or I can't remember which one it happens. But we do see the perspective of people going Dutchman and the perspective of oh, people yes, having yes. like time issues and stuff like that. But it would have been kind of cool to like throw a chapter over to like one of these systems 
the, yeah, some random ring world. Too. They have like an yeah. uprising, local and overthrow of the seriously. I mean, like, that would, like really, government. that would really mess up everybody in that whole sit, like millions or billions of people for a while. Like, I don't know how you'd bounce back from that. Honestly. No, and think about it. Like, you have this whole situation. Like, I'm I'm surprised that they didn't do that honestly because like you have all the people rioting and like you know or I would think that they would be rioting, like needing some answers. And like the guy who's ruling it all, their king is not even around. He's not even making any appearances or anything. He's too busy trying to figure it out, or at least we're told, but like how long is the populace is going to sit by and listen to that one before I overthrow the local overlords, you know? Uh, One of my favorite lines of the book was actually delivered by Jillian, who I didn't really like for a second because, you know, actually, I mean, not liking is kind of a strong phrase, but like, I understood her mentality, you know, she was like, we can give up one little girl for to save everybody. Like Like, I'm super down. Yeah. Yeah. To give up. Yeah. But her, Oh, I thought was silly about that was trusting Trejo. Right. Duh. Well, I mean, it was silly to trust Trejo. Uh, but hindsight's 2020, obviously, but, uh, I mean, it made her rationale behind it was essentially, you know, like, yeah, who cares? Like, let's just give this girl back and then we won't all die. Like, that sounds Yeah, great. but that like, wasn't that's... the reason Naomi didn't do the thing. It was because Trejo's actions were like, if he was sincere, he wouldn't still be like circling this. Uh, he would have totally. removed yeah. his defense no, they, or something. They were right? able to, but like, you know, Jillian was acting in a more kind of like, like, oh, no, this is our out, you know, like, let's yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, um, But then after the fact, though, she kind of kind of realized the error of her ways, you know, and then what she tells the uh, the attacking ship she says, I would let your superiors know that when Colonel Tanaka opened fire without provocation on Draper Station, she didn't just kill us, she killed you too. That was oh. so badass. Like, that was <laughs> yeah. so, oh man, I love that. That was so cool. Like the guy you worked for sucks. <laughs> that was such a good line. I loved it. Oh, it was so great. Folks, I think this is I think we gotta go. I think this yeah, is man, this has been long. Think- we could probably be here for a lot longer picking things apart, but I like the I like ending with the put orders in it that should become a, a book review skill tradition i think we've done it every time yeah anyway. i like i like ranking so, them everybody knows yeah. that from the content that i make i like ranking stuff and i don't want to i don't want to be done with the expanse i so do and i so don't i know right? yeah, like, well, it's like yeah, i've been complaining about how i'm fatigued this whole time yeah. but then i'm like now that we're saying goodbye it's like oh. i really like talking about it yeah i really do I, I love nerding out about it and i think that if we were if we did like a five-hour episode I don't think either of us would be sick of it, but I think maybe our listeners might. So absolutely, <laughs> they would. <laughs> and you know, there's a like with every book series, there's because like a book becomes kind of a a companion to you, not only the people within it, but kind of its own like personality of all the the summation of all of the characters within it and the life events that happen to you as a person over the course of you reading it and since this book is series is so large it's like you know a lot of life has happened over the last like four or five months yeah, that we've been reading this book. and yeah, so it's it really like has. it kind of becomes a little nostalgic and grows larger yeah. than just the story because it connects you to the events that happened while you were reading it and uh i think that's uh it's always it always comes with a little bit of sadness when we say goodbye to a book series even one that i'm very fatigued on um like this one it'll always be that big sci-fi series that i was reading in the first half of 2023 you know, definitely the largest sci-fi series that i've ever read it's got i think it's mine too it's yeah, yeah. i think before and, this, and probably the was, second best what's the first best red rising what we're oh, reading next. which we're about to read <laughs> yeah. yeah uh we're also reading faithful in the fallen uh because we just finished the expanse everybody so uh look out for episodes Ooh. on both red rising and faithful in the fallen um pretty soon yeah and if you're listening to this in the far future uh thank you for listening we are probably reading something else right now but yeah what you should also check out strong. we move onwards baby but i am uh as i'm going to go and assuage my already missing holden and crew not really holding so much i shouldn't say that i should say naomi and crew because he's one of my least favorite actually of the rasanati um by reading faithful and the fallen which i've been really looking forward to so thank you everyone so much for sticking with us for nine books if you have read the ninth book with us you are a true uh book reviews kill uh listener and uh man we really appreciate you sticking with us this long it's been a ride it it's has been, been a ride. I'm, I'm gonna miss Alex, and I'm gonna miss Amos, Amos and Bobby, Bobby, and Clarissa, and Naomi, and Holden, and Avasarala, and the Rasinante as a place. The Rasinante, yeah. And it's gonna, breaking coffee machine. 
Oh man, that hurt a little bit when you said that. I was just like, man, I miss I miss yeah. holding and drinking coffee. Oh jeez. Yeah. Uh, I've got a lot of these audiobooks on my uh Kindle so or on my phone, so I might Same. just like throw one on every now and then. And yeah, just, yeah, like, I did that with one of the um books of Babel a couple weeks ago. I just listened to the oh, last yeah. one for like a couple chapters. I was like, this is awesome. It's so good. Yeah. Um but yeah, everybody, thank you so much for listening to this pretty long episode, which it was deserving of being a very long episode. Absolutely. And um yeah, we will see you on the next episode of Book Reviews Kill when we get into Faithful and the Fallen or uh, Red Rising and all the other books that we're planning on reading this year. So, Books um, and reviews will continue to be killed. Oh boy! Well, <sighs> every time, man. Every, every time, time, every, every time, 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 time we finish a series, it's so bittersweet, and I just like I don't want to end it because I just I love nerding out about this stuff so much. And this is a series that <laughs> it's so convoluted sometimes on purpose that the, it and makes I feel me like, want to nerd out even harder because yeah, i just want to like, like there's still unexplained unearth- things yeah, i know i just want to keep on earthing stuff but anyway uh, the conversation does uh, continue in our discord though hey it, it will always continue in the discord and everybody thank you so much again seriously for sticking with us for this whole series it really means the world to me and chad and uh if you're listening to this on youtube or something and you're at work and you're just kind of like passing time and I hope that Chad and I were able to clear some stuff up or, you know, um, if we didn't like leave a comment, you know, like at the very leave- least be a companion to you as these books were a companion to us throughout the course of them. Yeah. All right. That's going to do it for us today, everybody. Thank you again for listening. And I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. And of course, happy reading. Bye, everybody.